Recently, you must have heard in the news that the Chinese military launched a rocket carrying a hypersonic glide vehicle that flew through the low orbit space. Many of you thought it's a hypersonic missile. No, it's not a missile. It was a rocket carrying a hypersonic glide vehicle that flew through low earth orbit. So there is a difference between a vehicle and a missile. Hypersonic vehicles fly five times faster than the speed of sound. And this actually opens up a whole new world of flight vehicles that can provide faster access to space. So here we are talking about the propulsion technology. Because it is the engine, the rocket booster that will make you go to space much faster. The country that has the advanced propulsion technology, that country can fly faster to the space. It's a race to the space. Any country that makes any kind of advancement in the propulsion technology, that country is going to reach the space much faster compared to anyone else. That is the whole deal about the hypersonic vehicles. A hypersonic vehicle can be an aircraft, spacecraft or a rocket. On this vehicle, if you can install a missile that is nuclear capable, that's when we say it's a hypersonic nuclear missile. However, even if China tested a hypersonic vehicle, even that sends a clear message to everyone about China's progress on hypersonic weapons. So currently there are three countries that have achieved great amount of success in hypersonic technology. And those three countries are China, Russia and United States. Actually North Korea is also there. But these three countries have advanced and achieved mastery on it. These three nations are in a race to develop hypersonic weapon systems. As I've said, so far they have managed to build a hypersonic vehicle. It will not be a surprise if the next challenge they want to pursue would be a hypersonic cruise missile. But then if you look at Russia, it already has hypersonic weapons called the Kinzhal that it claims can reach a speed of Mark 10. And it says that it has another hypersonic missile called the Avangard that boosted by a rocket can go up to Mark 27. This boosting by rocket is a hypersonic vehicle. That means the hypersonic vehicle will give a certain boost after that, the missile that is installed on that vehicle is also a hypersonic missile that will go further more. It all looks like science fiction, right? But the countries are claiming all of this. So anyhow, Russia is the first country armed with hypersonic weapons. Now the next problem is, how do you detect hypersonic missiles? See, if one country has a particular technology, then you don't need to find an antidote because no one will compete with you. But then if three countries have the same technology, then you definitely need an antidote. That is why as of now, there are four countries that have claimed to have tested hypersonic missiles. They are USA, China, Russia and North Korea. That means right now four countries have hypersonic technology. Development and acquiring of such advanced military technology shifts the balance of power. You all must be aware of the fact that for a long time, the United States had dominated the world politics in military, economic as well as cultural aspects over other nations. We also call it US hegemony. But now with the development of military technology to an extent where three of the four countries that have developed and acquired hypersonic missiles are from Asia, that definitely changes the balance of military power as well as world politics. This year has been quite interesting in the world of advanced military technology. The US and its Western allies are also concerned because Russia, China and North Korea have claimed to have developed hypersonic vehicles as well as missile systems that have the power to go completely undetected on US radars. That means United States has no technology or you can say an antidote for the Asian hypersonic trio. I'll say it again, hypersonic technology has the potential to be one of the world's fastest and most accurate weapons. And if you fit a nuclear warhead, it will reach the pinnacle of modern day weapon technology. Right now, apart from these four countries, France, Germany, Australia, India and Japan are working on hypersonics. And Iran, Israel and South Korea have conducted basic research on the technology. In my last video where I was talking about Agni-5 missile, I saw many comments saying, including many Indians who were saying, well, it's nothing compared to China's hypersonic missile. True, as of now, we don't have a hypersonic missile. But what makes you think that India doesn't have a hypersonic technology vehicle? India has also developed hypersonic technology. As of now, we do have a hypersonic vehicle. All India has to do is put a cruise missile like Brahmos or an ICBM like Agni on the hypersonic vehicle. That will do the job. Since India and China are neighbors, it does not matter whether China has hypersonic missiles or not. What matters is that both the countries have the capability of hitting each other with nuclear weapons even without hypersonic missiles. India as of now doesn't have a threat which is beyond 2000 km range. 
the two biggest threat of India are right next to each other. In dealing with these two countries, India has all the party items. And few minutes back I've said India and other nations like France, Germany, Australia and Japan are also working on hypersonic missiles. So it is just a matter of time. But anyhow coming to the main point, that is shift in balance of power. United States, China, Russia and North Korea are claiming to have hypersonic missile system. And three of them are Asian countries and they have no likeness towards the United States. In such a scenario, America is alone. If Russia, China and North Korea joins together, they can pull the balance of world power towards their side. Because the United States have not yet developed any system that can defend against hypersonic missiles. The ability to track and take down a hypersonic missile remains a question. And this is also true with the three Asian countries. The only concern for United States is that it is alone when compared to the three Asian countries. Once other nations also catch up to this hypersonic technology, then United States will have some hypersonic allies. Then again the next challenge would be who will develop a system that can defend against hypersonic missiles or can go up a notch. And by the way the present hypersonic technology that these four countries have they are not perfect. I mean to say these hypersonic technology will not hit the target with precision. For example what China tested recently, their rocket flew through the low orbit space circling the globe before cruising towards its target and missed the target by 38 kilometers. And then if you see the flight path of a hypersonic missile is also unpredictable which is a key advantage for any country. But then the system is not yet perfect. Since it is not perfect, right now it may turn out to be a disadvantage because any kind of unintended targets can make non-enemy countries to respond by mistake. So overall hypersonic technology is still in development mode. It is not perfect and currently there is no global policy regarding the do's and don'ts of the hypersonic technology. So you see this technology can easily cause unintended conflicts between countries. The US Defense Department has an aggressive development program, planning up to 40 tests over the next 5 years, putting more than 1 billion dollar annually into hypersonic research. This is according to a government report. United States and Russia, the then Soviet Union, has always been in an arms race since the Cold War times. You should read about Operation Paperclip. More than 1600 German scientists, engineers and technicians were taken from former Nazi Germany to the United States. They became US government employees after the end of World War II between 1945 and 1959. Even Russia did an operation called the Operation Osoa Vyakhim, where the Soviets took 2200 German scientists, engineers and technicians and made them work for Soviet Union. During the Cold War, the two superpowers spent huge proportion of their GDP on developing military technologies. Nazi Germany was ahead of the US and Soviets in developing jet engine. In fact, the Henkel HE-178 was the world's first aircraft to fly under turbojet power and the first practical jet aircraft developed by Nazi Germany just 5 days before the start of the World War II. So that is how United States and Russia has always been in an arms race since the Cold War era. And one more thing that I want to say is all these things that we are hearing about hypersonic technology, ballistic missiles, how fast they can go, what they are capable of, all these specifications are notified to us by the government, right? Practically, you and I cannot go inside these secret defense technology complex and see these things, right? So you have to understand a few things. There are a lot of things that the government will not let the civilian know. They need to keep off the radar when it is about defense technology. It is in a country's best interest to not reveal secret defense programs like hypersonic aircraft and missiles, advanced propulsion like no heat signatures, no sign of propulsions. You see there is tremendous competition going on among countries specifically for controlling and weaponizing space. And countries also conduct espionage, spying, hacking to obtain political and military information. I'll give you an example of that. Recently the Chinese Communist Party achieved 100 years, right? As usual China's leader Xi Jinping spoke on it. He said that the Chinese Communist Party will turn China into the biggest player in the history of the world. When such a statement is made, the next common question that comes in anyone's mind is, can they do it without colliding with America? Because even America wants to remain as the biggest player in the world. So if you look at this, this is a story two talwar wali baat. And then you must have also heard about the Global China 2049 initiative. Read about it if you want to understand it more. But then I will give you an informal summarization. It is called China's expansionist policy. By 2049, China wants to be the global superpower. You must have noticed how China is expanding its naval power. 
China is also taking over many tech companies and asking them to share user information. And then China also has a lot of influence and control on its own people when compared to other countries' governments. I don't know if you know this, last year in December, there was a cyber attack in United States. Read about SolarWinds hack. It was one of the most sophisticated hacks ever done. Microsoft was the first company who came to know about it. And as per the US government, the Russian intelligence was behind it. SolarWinds is an IT management company that also gives services to the US government agencies like Treasury, Intel Department, Defense Department, and a lot of other sectors. Microsoft discovered this hack in December 2020. And then in the month of March 2021, the Chinese hacked the Microsoft Exchange servers. That means if China wants to be a global power by 2049, and that too without colliding with the US directly, can you take a guess how is that going to be possible? China is not going to invade, it will infiltrate. American companies have been outsourcing their manufacturing units to China to have their goods assembled or completely built overseas at incredibly low costs. China's labor is cheaper than the US. Because of this, China is able to copy everything and has invested heavily in R&D for a decade. You must have heard about a famous saying, right? A manufacturer knows more about the product than the user. Being a global manufacturer, Chinese products help China to infiltrate without raising much alarm. That is how China has decided to be on the top of the food chain. China steals information because it is a lot easier to reverse engineer things. That is why the Indian government banned many Chinese apps this year in January, right about the same time when America had cyber attack. Now I'm not saying the West doesn't do that. Hacks are done by almost everyone who has achieved a certain level of expertise and have advanced technology. But try to understand the difference in the approach. I'm not defending anyone, I'm just trying to make you understand the approach. The Western country has very targeted approach. For example, if you need so-and-so information for national security, you prioritize it and go out and figure out who has access to it. And then you plan how to acquire it. This is what the Western countries do. Now, if you look at the Chinese, what they do is they have a long-term approach. They gather all sorts of information and data first and then sit and sort out later. Through low-rate Chinese gadgets, apps, they get plenty of user information. They acquire all of that and then sit and sort it out. This way, Chinese work on multiple projects. This is also how the Chinese can infiltrate in societies, organizations and develop a target. Since the United States has a racially and ethnically diverse population, China can easily plant a student in America who is actually working for the Chinese intelligence. That student will finish graduation, get a job and might even get into the government. So what I'm saying is China is willing to put that much of long-term effort and investment. Now the same method might not work in India, but don't be surprised if China has a different plan towards India. If you and I can think about it, don't you think the governments are doing it? Now it is no more a secret. China funds many anti-India protests. They engage in propaganda through their media outlets. Everyone knows about China's direct funding to Pakistan. And then there are indirect funding to some internal anti-state elements. China has even hacked India's power grid. Do you remember that? That also happened right about the same time when Microsoft Exchange was hacked. Of course, the Chinese deny it, but the Indian government blames China. Power grids are part of any country's critical infrastructure. Russians have also done the same thing in Ukraine in September 2015. Somewhere if you see, you will get a feeling that Russia and China cooperates on these matters. North Korea gets the technology and help from China, that's no secret. In fact, North Korea's ICBMs are a copy of Soviet designs. North Korea is China's proxy against South Korea and Japan. Likewise, Pakistan is China's proxy against India. So if you see these trio, Russia, China and North Korea, they cooperate on these matters. But anyhow, the Chinese are not going to stop. They will keep doing it. India has to continue making it more painful for them. That's the only way. You have to find new ways of making it painful for China. United States is already doing it. The regular methods that you see are already in place like sanctions, trade war. India uses a different approach like banning Chinese apps and technology, then raising Taiwan issue, Tibet issue, pressing China's aching vein that is its trade routes via the Indian Ocean, and inviting the West to conduct naval exercises in the Indian Ocean region. But then if you want to counter China, as harsh it may sound, you have to find new ways to make it painful for China. Because the Chinese regime is ruthless, they are already a master of debt trap diplomacy. China invests in many countries' infrastructure projects, fully aware that they will not be able to return back the money. 
China then acquired a piece of their assets. China has done that to Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, many of the Eastern African countries like Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Mozambique. Then in Latin America, countries like Venezuela, Colombia, Bolivia, Mexico. All these countries are the most in debt to China. Tomorrow, China will also roll out 5G network in these countries, especially in Latin American countries. China's tech companies are anyhow in Communist Party's control. So China's 5G ambitions in overseas can definitely turn out to be a potential threat to United States soil. And not just United States, to India as well. After all, today all you need is a high-speed communication line for spreading propaganda and fake narratives. So you see it is not in the best interest of anyone to let China expand its influence. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.